Hi, everybody. I uh, just wanted to talk about what happened this past week uh, in the stock market. Um, in general, we had a good week to start with, and then things got bad near the end of the week on Thursday and Friday. So the warning sign started on Tuesday, um, really here. You can see, uh, and then Tuesday night, uh, things started to drop uh, into the morning here. And then on Wednesday, the stock market kind of went up. So you could kind of tell that there was something wrong here overnight, um, at least in the futures market. So the thing that really changed was Monday was such a positive day uh, in the market in general um, after uh, kind of a loss from last week to Friday of last week. So we kind of hit the Friday here and then we started to see something right at the end of the day here. And then Monday morning early, uh, we started to see some good signs. So the MACD on Monday and Tuesday was just so strong. You can see here uh, both days, uh, but a little bit of a decline on Tuesday in terms of the peak of the MACD. Um, so that could have given us some sign. You can see the peak here again down from uh, the peak on Wednesday uh, as opposed to Tuesday was down as well. So, And then far significantly down on each of these other days. So the big question from last week really in my mind was can we predict Friday? Was Friday predictable because it was such a big drop um, in any, uh, was it predictable on Thursday? Potentially uh, even as far back as Tuesday, um, could we see uh, that something might bad happen this week? So on the weekly side, um, when you look at the whole market here, you can see it's kind of hard to tell um, that we really had a, such a tough week. You can see Tesla down 15% uh, for the, well, 16% for the week. Um, many of the real estate companies going down um, and then, you know, potentially even finance and some utilities. Uh, but it doesn't really look that bad except for when you look at the details. So AMD uh, being a mainstay there uh, going down, you can see AMD is down 7.76% 7, 7 and then Tesla being a mainstay here as well for the auto industry. Uh, down quite a bit um, and some other ones uh, within the within the within the auto industry not doing so great as well and the other reason we're doing this is to try to figure out what's going on next week um, from this past week like can we infer anything uh, particularly on Friday um, is this downward trend significant enough to warrant a problem uh, further on for next week so first of all, we would have liked to see the MACD close the week at least at zero here. So it did not, um, maybe needed some more time. So we might see that uh, Sunday and then going into early Monday morning in the futures market, this might drop uh, back to zero here, uh, which is likely. But then from there, the question is, where are we going? So it's likely that the volatility looks like here, it is kind of stabilizing a bit. Uh, to about 10 points on a 360 point scale. So what does that equate to in terms of percentage? It's about 3%, uh, a little bit less than 3%. Um, so technically about 2.8%. So we'll likely see a lot of uh, big moves, relatively big moves uh, next week in around the 2.8% range. I don't see that falling off much and, and it could even go up uh, from here. So it's likely that we'll stay within one standard deviation of the price moves that we've seen from last week. So that's basically you know 60, 70 percent of the time um, we'll see moves around in this range. So basically, it's looking like 12 points. So 12 points is basically you know 3.5 percent. So even that. So most almost every day next week will be less than 3.5 percent, um, and but somewhere in that range. So when we looked at last week, um, the confusing part was that, you know, on Monday, there was just such a downward force here, um, and then the rest of the day was up. So right at, uh, you know, this this is about, this is the SPY, you can see it was a pretty major downward force. That didn't really show up on the MES um, like it did on the SPY. So, uh, you know, there was a little bit of downward force here you saw, but then the main force was actually positive for that day, so on the third. Um, and then you can see it kind of decelerated a little bit. Um, and it looked like because that downward momentum was down here, that essentially that Tuesday was a more, essentially a better day 
uh, than Monday, right? So it was looking like, all right, well, well maybe maybe this is going to go on for Wednesday. Um, but then by Wednesday time, um, things started to deteriorate. Um, you can see right at 930, things look good, and then bam, down. And then most of the rest of the day, there was some up, but it, not nearly the force that we saw at the start of the day there. So, and then the, right at the end of the day, there was another downward force. So that should have been the indicator that we really were going to have a turn in the momentum. Should have been seen on Wednesday, you know, just seeing that this was certainly a more downward turn. And then maybe, you know, it's hard to say because, you know, on Tuesday you would have said, well, this looks like a good day. Wednesday is going to be pretty positive. Now, after seeing, and it did start off pretty positive on Wednesday, right? But then the downward trend here, downward trend here at the end of the day, um, that should have been able to be a warning sign. But let's go back and look at the SPY just to double check on things. So because the volume is different on the SPY than it is on the MES, uh, you can see slightly different characteristics on the force vector here. So you can see that, you know, according to the SPY, uh, which is more traded than the MES, um, you can basically see that this looks pretty bad here, um, especially on Wednesday, right? So, um, and then Monday looks even worse than it did on the other one. So that could have given us one warning sign that maybe the whole week was could potentially be bad um, just from that one thing. Now, if we look at extended hours, um, let me add display extended hours, see how that changes the chart. So now we have some extended hours on this for uh, Wednesday as well, and you can start to, start to see more of the details about what happened. So uh, essentially earlier, early in the day, so basically all that negativity was essentially from Friday, right? So it wasn't actually even from Monday. Um, you can see most of this here um, being Friday of the previous week, not last week. So that volume spike is really hard to see, but you can see right in here, that was the volume spike. Uh, and that happened right at the end of the day with a pretty big negative pulse, bigger than anything else that we've seen. So uh, including both positive and negative, and almost twice the volume. And I would even have to double check to see if that volume was actually correct for Friday. It looks so significantly negative. Now on the MES, you do see on that Friday also being pretty negative here. Uh, right at the end of the day, uh, for that five minute period, it was extraordinarily negative. Um, so that uh, is a huge warning sign for the rest of the week. That should have been seen. I mean, there's a lot of skepticism that should have been uh, inferred from that closing on Friday. Um, so one of the questions is, given this negativity here, where are we relative to that right now? Um, and you can see from this horizontal line um, that we're, you know, basically about, you know, 1% up from that line. So, uh, and in fact, we're right at the uh, volume profile here, which is basically slightly above where we're at right now. So you can kind of see here that on Friday, this volume swing was quite significant. Uh, at the end of the day here, you can see it's quite high. Um, nothing else on the other Friday, even on the Friday here, we have, um, did we see the kind of volatility right at the end of the day? So the big day for volume last week was basically on Tuesday, and you can see that was the highest volume uh, for the week, uh, and that was an upward move. Um, and we saw that the downward move wasn't nearly as high volume, uh, as the upward move. So that could give us an indicator of a possible up move um, from where we are here. So again, from last week, from the Klinger volume oscillator, you can see that, uh, again, it shows that the major volume uh, positive uh, was on Tuesday. Um, and then actually Monday had pretty positive volume as well. Com nothing really else comparing. And on the negative side, so there was actually a pretty big, negative volume pulse uh, during the middle of the day um, right here on Tuesday as well. So Tuesday was kind of an interesting day, um, mainly the kind of an inflection point uh, for what was going to happen for the rest of the week.
the Elder Bay Index is kind of a new indicator I've been using. Uh, it's kind of similar to the, the uh, cleaner volume oscillator. It's kind of a combination of a number, a number of different factors. But you can see here that on this, there was quite a lot of positive momentum earlier in the week, right? And then heading into Tuesday. And then you started to see this negative stuff at night. So this nighttime stuff was not to be joked with. So... It, although it did kind of show on Wednesday, still it went positive, uh, even despite the negative momentum into the nighttime uh, and even into the daytime. You can see part of the day, this is 930 here in the morning. Um, we were pretty negative, looking pretty negative, and then it went positive after that. Um, so why would it inflect in this point is a good question. So that inflection point does correspond to a MACD crossing, so you can kind of see Basically, the negativity here uh, did start to boil off a little bit, and then it curved around. So you can see that right there, that's pretty much the same uh, moment. So what is going to happen uh, in this next week? You know, it looks like to me uh, that the MACD did curve around again here, and we could see a number of both positive and negative days. Uh, but with the MACD curving around this fast, uh, it it suggests that there's a negative downturn. So whenever it's basically 45 degrees here, um, you know, it, it's basically right at 45 degrees right now. So that could be, you know, about breaking even. It just depends. Um, so we see two conflicts here, right? We see with the signal line, that's kind of going up, maybe heading into uh, about 30 point, um, you know, moves per day. Um, a 30 point move corresponds to, let's see here, about two, about 1%. So all this downward movement uh, basically is building momentum in a downward trend here, right? And it started uh, back in here around uh, 8 to 17. So you can kind of see on the force index that, you know, it, it's almost like, the market was going to turn around here, maybe come back, um, but with this current day here being what it was, you know, it, it's really hard to say. Uh, you know, essentially, if it if it might go further down into this territory, or come back up, um, and if it did, it would be back in here. So essentially, Friday brought us back. You know, we had these couple of days of positive volume. And then brought us back to the zero line, uh, not really being positive or negative in terms of net volume um, that we've seen, uh, at least recently. Now, fortunately, on the money flow, you can tell that the money flow doesn't really get below this level too often. Um, so if we do see something uh, into the 12th, that's possible. It looks like, you know, we might see Monday and Tuesday being down. Um, if it is down, then after that, it would have to go up. Um, just based on the money flow, we can't have money flow being keep going out of the market uh, indefinitely. But the price volume trend shows a whole different story, right? It shows that essentially there hasn't been any up, right? It's been all down, um, mostly down entirely um, when, when you talk about the actual money going out of the market. And the on balance volume shows the same story again here. It shows even worse, um, you know image of what could potentially happen. Um, so it looks like it's getting even worse here um, and with no real let up whatsoever. So breaking this down to some simple terms, um, you know, essentially we are heading down here right now. Um, and basically the volume of that downward trend has been increasing significantly. Um, and then it did decrease uh, recently, uh, the week before last week. So now it looks like we're actually increasing a little bit again. Um, and we may hit uh, kind of a middle ground here. But if you look carefully, this this little line here is significantly higher volatility uh, than we have seen in the past. So we are kind of entering maybe potentially a higher volatility uh, time frame next week. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this study of the stock market. Um, it's really difficult to predict everything for next week. Um, you know, I would say that uh, in general, looking at the MACD really is helpful. Looking at the volume and the force uh, index has all been helpful, uh, primarily to just see the next few days. 
Um, but after that, it's really hard to see uh, into next week. So again, looking into next week, um, we can see that the volatility, the ATR, average to range, does look to be kind of calming down here. Um, so, you know, we can see these these 2.5% days, 2.8% uh, days or so uh, should be pretty common um, into next week um, as this volatility goes up and down. And you can see here also that we're kind of at a mid medium point for volume. So that means we're not necessarily up, we're not necessarily down, but we are heading in a downward trend. Uh, at least for the past few days here. So we could anticipate at least Monday or Tuesday being a downward day, um, you know, based on this volume curve going down. Now on this side, we can also see the MACD shows prob perhaps Monday or Tuesday still being down. We are quite low here on this range. So we can see the MACD maybe going up a little bit um, or possibly even going getting worse. Um, so you can see a conflict here again, uh, between the MACD signal line and the actual MACD line. The force index is hardest for me to read for next week just because, you know, it looks like we're going to have less force next week um, than we've seen uh, this past week, just judging from this kind of oscillation that we've seen. We've seen pretty big oscillation through here and then kind of maybe calming down and going into lower uh, forces for next week. And that concludes just about everything I'd like to say. Uh, I hope you've really enjoyed what we're talking about. Let me know if you got any ideas. Please like and subscribe. I'd be glad to talk with you about the details. Thank you.